Hey guys, Andy here at MVP Java. Thanks for joining me. So today we're going to be taking a look at spring caching with caffeine. So yep, yet another caching implementation out there. And this one really caught my eye and that's why we're going to be covering caffeine here today. So first thing is spring cache setup. So there's some very small setup to do at the beginning. We'll cover that. And then we will eventually cover the five core annotations used at the spring cache abstraction layer that'll interact with our underlying implementation, caffeine, okay? Now, I'm not gonna be covering Spring Cache as an introduction or anything like that, so I'll cover more the caffeine aspect of things, but I definitely will talk about the five annotations here in order for everybody to be able to follow along, okay? So I'll cover the point on why use Caffeine Cache. Like I said, there's a lot of other caffeine, or there's a lot of other caffeine, yeah, but there's a lot of other implementations out there of caching, rather. Okay, and we'll obviously look at the demo. So, palm.xml file, I'm using Spring Boot, okay? So, Spring Boot version, in this case, 1.4.1. And as a starter dependency, I'm using caching, okay? Very important. Now, I do have MongoDB in here, although it's not a requirement. I just was trying to make things a little bit more simple when, you know, executing those create, retrieve, update, delete operations, but that's that's not really necessary. You can, you can use whatever you want. And I actually have my implementation here, my Ben Mains Caffeine implementation. Thank you, Ben Mains. Um, this is actually what we are going to um, register as uh, Spring B in terms of a cache manager, as we'll see. Okay, so first things first, when you're when you're booting your Spring Boot application, uh, one thing it will not do is um, enable Spring Caching as a service. So we have to do that explicitly over here. Enable Spring Caching, all the nice AOP interceptors, all that nice magic suddenly becomes available to us, okay? In terms of my configuration, I have my at configuration class. So I'm using Java config over here. Now, I've put all the properties that we can specify here when dealing with caffeine cache, okay? So a lot of these, um, these properties look, might look very familiar to you, uh, especially if you come from like a Guava cache background. And that's because Caffeine Cache actually extends Guava Cache in terms of functionality and uh, has added some, some new stuff, but it's in the implementation details that we have uh, the, the greatest difference, okay? So one thing that you have to do, and one of the only things you really have to do to get it running is to return a bean of type Cache Manager. So Cache Manager being one of those SPI interfaces that the implementations have to implement, okay? So over here you see that I'm implementing a caffeine cache manager and I'm, I'm specifying um, uh, a variable list of uh, caches that I want in my application. So I have a cache called aircrafts and I don't really need a second cache, but since I'm demoing some of the other annotations later on, I'm just creating a second cache, okay? That I won't directly be using. So. Let, I think this is a good time to kind of talk about what's so special about um, caffeine as a, a cache implementation, right? So the basic points or the basic selling points here on, on, on caffeine as a cache, like I said, Java 8, open source and all that kind of stuff, but it's got a very high hit rate and it's got your basic you know eviction and expiration policies that you might imagine so you can you can specify things by maximum size weights have to do with you know if you have different elements that have you know really different memory footprints you can kind of set weights on them and have them evict based on their weights and set maximum sizes we have time-based expirations so expire after access whether that be to read or write uh, expire after write. So uh, as soon as it gets into the cache, you write it or you can update it later on. So you can set these things like at five minutes, five seconds, five days, right? Refresh after write. That's kind of the same thing, except it has to do with the asynchronous behaviors that caffeine has. So that's another selling point is you can load the cache asynchronously or you could update the cache asynchronously. And this refresh after write attribute comes into play here if you specify it. And the nice thing here is that if you do go uh, you know, with the, the asynchronous nature, it's not the default, right? So we're gonna be covering the synchronous, which is the default. You'd have to, you know, uh, you'd have to come up with some, some extra code for the asynchronous stuff. I'm not gonna cover everything about 
caffeine in this tutorial, just know that it is possible. And if you do go that asynchronous route, you just got to be concerned about your data consistency. Okay, we got reference based uh, eviction. So if you want to have weak keys, right? So by default, everything is strong references as keys. So those have a tendency to stick around a lot longer in your um, cache. So if you want that sort of more accordion like cache where kind of you know shrinks a lot faster cleans itself out a little faster when there's no references um, that, that are holding on to those keys anymore in your application then you can specify weak keys and the same goes true for the values and you could even have a little bit stronger of um, you know in terms of references you can have you know there's the weak it's a little bit stronger soft and then you have your hard references okay we also have statistics which is fantastic so you can find out if you've got a cash hit a cash miss and you know how many you've got evicted all that kind of stuff we're going to actually look at that it's very simple to set up and um and uh, and then we're going to do it okay you also have eviction notification you can come up with like removal listeners that we're going to do as well and um that that's basically you know what you would expect but at the heart of it all okay the reason why it has such a high hit rate would basically call the near optimal hit rate um, is because of, of the um, kind of the internal data structure that it uses most um, other caches use what's called an LRU uh, eviction uh, algorithm right least recently used well caffeine cache uses more uh, more an implied algorithm it's much more involved it looks at things like recency and frequency and uses um, you know, these probabilistic algorithms that kind of predict if, you know, what your caching is going to be used in the near future. So just with that, that gives rise to an admission policy, which is which is very different because we're usually dealing just with eviction policy. So now with the introduction of an admission policy with an eviction policy, it makes things a lot better in terms of a higher hit rate count. OK. And, you know, you have to keep track of all these counters for frequency and everything. And that's basically one of the problems with the internal data structures in a cache is that it gets so big that it kind of sometimes outweighs the benefits of the caching because LRU caches are usually traditionally much larger than what's called an F an LFU cache, right? Frequency is for the F, right? And this is what caffeine uses. So the data structure that you use internally really uses um, less space for the counters. And then a lot of times it, it doesn't have um, counters for everything at all because it's using these um, probabilistic algorithms. Now this is a lot of details and you know it's not really important if you just wanna plug in a cache uh, implementation, but just know that you know the, um, the benefits of using caffeine are really in the details that you don't have to be concerned with. It's, it's, it's this, what's called the window tiny LFU data structure and um, that's much more involved than your basic LRU uh, eviction policy that makes everything happen. Lower memory footprint, high hit rate, fantastic. We want it, we're just gonna use it, okay? Over here, I do not want null values, um, therefore I'm setting that to false, right? Obviously, this can happen if, you, if you're caching the return value of a method and it returns null, next thing you know you have a key with a null value. I, I'm not interested in that, okay? So, all these attributes up here can be specified as a string, as you see here. So a very comma separated string, and you just basically say, hey, I want an initial capacity of 100, a maximum size of 500, and so on and so forth. Now here, M is four minutes, right? So you're saying, after I either read or write to it, I want it to be evicted uh, out of the cache after five minutes. That could be S for seconds or D for days. There's different time units there. And I want you to record the statistics because I'm going to be printing that out later on. Okay. So all I'm doing here, I got three ways I'm going to show you guys. So this way here, as I'm just saying, set cache specification, and the specification as a string, which is this guy up here. Okay. So then it'll be fully configured and I'll be able to use it. The other way, if you want a more object oriented way of doing things, right, is by using a caffeine spec. So a caffeine spec takes the string that you're interested in. Right, encapsulates it in an object of type caffeine spec, and then you can just call getters on and get all the information you want. So I can also pass that uh, to set caffeine spec over here. And the third, one of the third, well, there's four ways I'm gonna show you. The third way here is to use a builder. Now, for those of you who have used Guava Cache, right, this is gonna be very similar, where you're using a builder, using a Fluent API, and you're basically saying, hey, you know, initial capacity 100, maximum size 150, you go down, you go down, you know, the string as I have up here, it basically put everything there. 
Except here, we can take a look maybe at more of the time units. You got days all the way to nanoseconds, which is which is very um, very surprising, very interesting as well. Now here, the weak keys, like I said, you know, you can make uh, you can make your cache keys weak uh, wrapped in weak references so that they're uh, evicted. Uh, as soon as there's no strong references uh, during the next garbage collection cycle, they'll they'll be removed. Then your your cache will get smaller, more efficient, more uh, less of a memory footprint. Okay. Um, remove a listener. I want to know every time something is evicted from my cache. So here I could have used a lambda expression, but I didn't. Um, those of you who have have seen some of my other tutorials, know I'm not a huge fan of lambdas. I, I'm not against using them at all, but I'm not a huge fan of them. In this case, it would have made sense though, because uh, I only have basically one line, right? But every time something gets evicted, you know this this on removal method is going to get called, and I'm going to find out what key got removed, and uh, you know if it w was it evicted or is it me that actually evicted it manually. It's going to end up that it was actually me that it evicted it manually because the demo is not long enough. It's not a, like a running application for more than a, I think five six seconds, so you know you're not going to have any eviction happening automatically. And we're going to record the statistics. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the first way here because I want a less verbose output when I show you uh, when I show you that output in a second. The fourth way, the last way I'm going to show you is through um, Spring Boot parameters. So you can actually go in here and Spring Cache dot Cache Names, and you can have a comma separate list of uh, cache names. So actually here. I think it was uppercase that I was using and you could have like, you know, whatever I had there before was second cache, I think, right? Uh, the other thing is here, you can have um, that string with all the key value pairs as the configuration attributes in there. So this is pretty cool. You don't even have to mention that in your Java config file. I'm not going to use it, but I want to show you that you can actually do that. So there's a whole bunch of um, configuration options. Yeah, I want to save that. Okay, and um, the next thing on our list is to see exactly what we're going to cache, right? In terms of a domain object here, I have an aircraft, and the aircraft here is actually going to be a, Mongo, a MongoDB document. That's why I have these, these annotations here. Don't worry about those. It has a model number or a model string, right? Like a Cessna, I don't know, 747 or a Piper or whatever. And that's, that's immutable. And it's very important that this be immutable in this case. Well, string by default, you know. If we talk about string, just a string it is immutable, but uh, I, this is important because I want that to be the key in my map, in my cache, right? So you got to realize that if your keys are changing, that's not good for your cache, right? So you got to make sure that your keys are immutable. They're not going to be changing in your cache. So this is why I'm making this guy immutable here, final. And my speed, my top speed for this aircraft, you know, like in knots, uh, that'll be immutable because I'll want to update li later on. But the other thing is that's very important is that when you're going to be storing things in your cache, they're going to be stored by key and the default implementation is going to be using obviously hash code. Okay, so you have to make sure that whatever you're going to specify as your key in the cache implements hash code and equals as well. Uh, if not, you're going to get a whole bunch of interesting behaviors when you try to get things out of the cache. All right, so that we're just basically caching an aircraft here. So if we go take a look at the aircraft service class, right? Uh, first thing you'll notice is the cache config annotation at the class level. So again, I'm not going to cover all these exhaustively because this, this this is more of a caffeine you know introduction. But caffeine cache um, cache config annotation, excuse me, is a way to regroup commonly used attributes on all your annotations on the method. So for example, you see this method here. Uh, I used cacheable. This method over here, I used cache put and so on and so forth. I got some other ones here using evict. I'm not using, I'm not specifying the name of the cache on all these annotations. What I'm doing is I'm going on the class level and specifying it there one time. So I don't have to repeat over and over again. So it's a nice way to just kind of regroup that verbosity in one place at the class level. It's a comma separated list that you can do. I only have one that I'm really interested in. So I put aircrafts. So Whenever I go get an aircraft by its model name, right, I want to make sure, you know, that it's cached. 
So this cacheable annotation does exactly that. It says, well, I'm gonna first check in the cache if what you're requesting is there. And it does that by looking at the parameter. So if ever you call this method twice with the same parameter value, in this case, model name, then the second time for sure it's gonna go get it in the cache. The first time it'll see it's not in the cache and it's gonna to have to execute this method, right? A cache miss, if you will, over here, a cache miss. And then it'll put the result in the, the value, the result in the cache. So how it does that is by looking at the argument over here, right? The parameter that's being passed in, it says, okay, this is a string. String is a natural um, key, right? It automatically overrides equals and hash code and all that stuff. So I'll use that as the key in the uh, cache. If um, you had like multiple parameters, it would basically put them all up, wrap them up in a simple key generator class and hash code all of them together and put them in there, okay? And if you didn't have anything at all, if it was empty parameter list, it would put an empty simple key generator as a um, key. So what you gotta realize is that right here, you got other attributes, right? For example, key. I can specify the key. I can specify a custom key generator. So a custom key generator would be like me saying, uh, I want to implement the key generator class. So you'd have to write code. But the nice thing is, is that in the key attribute itself, they allow us to use spring spell expressions that start with the pound sign here, the hash, whatever you want to call it. And that'll allow you to specify specific context or specify, you know, the name of the method, specify the name of the parameter. There's a whole bunch of contexts that you can use to bypass having to write a coded implementation, which is really nice. We'll see this in a second, okay? It just doesn't pertain to this uh, specific use case right now. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm saying is, spell here, right, the pound sign, I want you to get the result, which is the aircraft. So this is a built-in context over here. I want you to get the result, but I want you to cache this only if it's not equal to null, right? So if it's equal to null, I don't want to, to, for you to cache this. So this is an unless. You have conditions, and uh, as I'll show you in a second, but you also have unless. So I want to cache this unless the result is equal to null. I don't want any null values in my cache, okay? Next one here, whenever I create an aircraft, I want to put that in my cache. So it's automatically going to populate my cache based on a specific key. Now the key here, right, again, remember I said I want my string model name to be the key. So this is an aircraft though. So what I got to do is through spell, right, I don't want to come up with my own key generator having to write code. So what I'm going to use is use spell directly. Say, here, go get my aircraft, go get my model property. That's what I want as my key. And I want to specify condition. I, do, I want you to put it in the cache only if its top speed is greater than zero. But, you know, unless the result equals null. So don't put it in the cache if it's equal null, only if it, the top speed is greater than zero. So you see how you can play around with these conditions and make sure that you don't have null or something that gets in there. And you can get around with not writing code for a key generator by specifying the key and using the spell expression over here. Now there's a big difference between cacheable and cache put. Both of them are going to update your cache, okay? But cacheable will skip over this method call if it finds that it's already in the cache. Whereas cache put will always execute your method before updating the cache. So those are two enormous differences between both of them, okay? Cache evict, whenever I update an aircraft, I don't want to update the cache. In this case, I said I want to evict it. I don't want to take any chances. This is like my first attempt at caching. I don't want any tricky things happening. I want to evict the cache right away. The next time, you know, they go get that aircraft, sure, I'll get a cache um, miss. But the, 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 the time after that, it'll be in the cache, right? So again, I'm specifying the key off the aircraft and it's the model. So it'll evict it. I can also remove a specific aircraft doing the same exact thing, evicting it on that key. And the last annotation is caching. This is one probably that you'll, that's been used the least that I've seen, right? What happens is, is there's a Java uh, limitation that you can't put the same annotation type on a method, right? So in this case, because we're using Spring Cache, you can only put these uh, annotations on public methods, okay? Uh, due to the way the interceptors, the AOP is, it works. So over here, we can wrap them up in a caching. There's a couple of attributes here. Here I have to pick evict because I'm using cache evict. And I'm saying when you clear all caches, I want you to clear the cache aircrafts 
I want you to clear all uh, entries. I'm not using some condition or some key or anything like that. And over here, second cache as well. That was the second cache that I configured over here. Remember when I uh, specified the uh, caffeine cache manager. So now all of this is going to get evicted and I can only do this because I'm wrapping them up in a caching annotation. Okay. So I'm obviously slowing the demo down a little bit because I'm, I'm running MongoDB locally. So it's actually very fast. So I'm slowing it down by two seconds. Whenever we go get uh, an aircraft by model name, it'll slow it down when we get a, a cache miss. Okay. So that's it. Now we go to our cache tutorial. Okay. What I have here is I implement command line runner. So Spring will pick this up and execute the run uh, method. I have here a cache manager that I am going to be auto wiring in through the constructor and that service class. And I want to use the cache manager because I want to print out those statistics and I want to just print out some, 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 you know, string information for the tutorial sake. So over here, that's what I'm doing. I'm getting the simplified name of that class. So it should be like caffeine cache that comes up. I'm creating three aircrafts, a Cessna, an Aerostar and a Piper. All right. Using these model names and then you know setting their maximum uh, speeds in terms of knots that's the specification so when i create these three aircraft they should be stored in the cache right because as i showed you i have a cache put in there then when i go get each aircraft individually okay i should only see you know calling these methods with these three little dots here but i'm not going to see anything else because it's going to go hit the cache three times for these three models so they're going to get three cache hits there. I update the Piper to 200, right? So when I update, what do I do? I evict. Remember, I had an eviction. I didn't have a cache put there. I go get the model, the Piper. It's going to be a miss because I evicted it. I go get it again, but it's going to be a hit this time because when I call get, remember, I have the cacheable annotation there. So it'll the second time I call it, it'll cache it. Now I want to explicitly remove Piper, evicts it. If I go get it after, right? through the getter aircraft by model name, I'll miss it. And um, if I clear all caches, that's it clears both caches. And it doesn't matter what I go get after that, the first time it, it'll just miss it both times. So I wanna print the statistics out, see what happened. Now, if you count all these hits and all these missed comments here, there's four and four. Now, when you go to the, the get coffee cache stats method, I go get my cache manager, I get a specific cache, the aircrafts, and I go get the native cache. That's that Ben Main's caffeine cache that I get back. If you go look at the imports on top, you'll see the cache import there. And then I just basically say, hey, show me the stats. Okay, so that gets printed out as a two string. And that's exactly what we're gonna see now. Okay, so now we've explained everything. Let's take a look at the output of this. Let me wait for it to finish. And you can see right off the bat here, that I'm using a caffeine cache manager. That was the, the print that I did at the beginning. I'm executing, I'm creating these three aircrafts over here. And the next time I, I call them, remember when I, when I create an aircraft, it goes right into the cache. So when I call the three getters, right? The only time, you know, I'm not gonna see a cache miss message because it's hitting the cache. So I get three hits right there. I update an aircraft, right? I set the top speed to 200 this time. And I get a cache evict because I want it to evict every time I update. The next time I go get that Piper, right, I get a cache miss because I evicted it. The next time I go get another Piper here because I removed it, I get an evict. And you can just follow the tracer. I get a miss again because I went to get the one that I just removed explicitly. And when I clear all the caches, doesn't matter what I go get, right, I always get a cache miss. So basically i should have four hits four misses and that's exactly what the cache stats reports right there's four hits and four misses and i got some other metrics here that i haven't really exercised yet but this is this is a very good way to figure out you know what's going on with your caching internally is by printing out these cache statistics or making some asserts on them during, um, you know, during your tests and stuff like that. Make sure things are going as expected over here. So that worked out very nicely for us. If we go back to the cache config and we say, okay, now we want to use, you know, the builder, the builder way of doing things, 
okay so now what we're gonna have this is not gonna make a difference the wikis just because uh, you know the the application is not long enough to be running to you know for our garbage collection to uh, really make a difference here to see that you know you're, you don't have any strong references left uh, I have a removal listener so every time I do an eviction I'll get this message message that pops up so if we go take a look at this now it'll be the same exact output but now uh, what's going to happen is, is you're going to get these, um, you know, these outputs here like this. Remove a listener called with key. Uh, Piper caused ex uh, is explicit, right? So we explicitly evicted it ourselves. There wasn't a built-in eviction algorithm that did it. And uh, <clears throat> again, ev eviction false. You know, if it would have been true if it was the internal algorithm uh, that had done it. Let's say by time or by size or or by reference or something like that. Okay, so you get them all, all the all the listeners that are executed here. We still get the same metrics, right? We just configured a, a couple of different things, but nothing more than that. So there you have it, guys. That is how we uh, configure Spring Cache with caffeine hope you enjoyed that uh, there's going to be some more tutorials coming down the pipe uh, dealing with caching so stay tuned for those don't forget to subscribe to get notified of those and uh, if you appreciated the, the tutorial don't forget to like it thanks for everything guys thanks for watching and uh, catch you next time